Hey YouTube, Maddie's Day 12, Team JMT, coming to you guys with another TLGGames.com deck profile. Uh, however, this one is not just TLGGames.com, this one is actually ARG related. I went to the ARG Open, the ARG Circuit Series in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I top 32 to that event. Uh, the first premier event uh, that I've ever had a chance to uh, actually play in, uh, and yes, I do consider it a, a premier event, uh, I, that, that's, a, uh, that's a topic for another video. Um, the first one I've ever had a chance to actually play in. Now, I have uh, been to several YCSs and, and Shonen Jumps, but I've never had a chance to play in one. As odd as that sounds, this is actually my first premiere event other than Nats that I, I've had a chance to play in. Uh, and I topped the event. So, uh, yeah, I feel pretty confident about that. Like, I'm really proud of myself for that. Um, I played Evil Swarm. Uh, I got 30th place, uh, which is not incredible, but it got me in the money, so uh, I finished with prizes. So, uh, ARG got a deck profile of me, so before it goes up, which they said would be up Monday or Tuesday, and I'll have a link to that, before it goes up, I want to give you guys my deck profile. So, let's get into this. Triple Kirkion. Uh, he makes Ophion for you, so you need it. Uh, triple Caster. He makes Ophion for you, so you, you need it. The additional normal summon is nice. Uh, triple Heliotrope. Um, he's a beat stick, you know, so he is what he is. Uh, so he does good things. Uh, Mandragora. I don't like this card, but you need it in case you go second. If you're going second, Mandragora is an excellent entry into Ophion. Uh, and going game one, you have no guarantee that you're going to go first. So you've got to uh, you've you've got to have the triple Mandragora for the chance that you are going second. However, if I'm going to be going uh, first, Mandragora is not as good. So if I know I'm going first in game two or in game three, uh, I'm siding this guy out, uh, making it an easy side out, and um, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So yeah, there you go. I mean, like I'm. Mandragora is there. I'm not a big fan, but it's there. Uh, Thunderbird. Thunderbird actually put in a lot of work in the uh, uh, prophecy matchup that I had in round uh, seven ish. Sure, uh, seven ish. Uh, I believe it was round seven. Uh, prophecy matchup. I actually two owed him, uh, overwhelmed him with Ophion uh, and protection in game one, and then game two, Thunderbird for game guys. As odd as that sounds, Thunderbird. I keep pushing through all of his back row. He's activating everything, and I'm vanishing, and that's all I had on board. It's just the Thunderbird. I'm I, I'm attacking, 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 and he has no choice but to try to use his back row to stop the attacks, and I'm vanishing and vanishing and returning and he's just like I put him in a situation where I'm doing this so many times that he eventually has to start using fate so now he's banishing his stuff and when I get past the fate he has absolutely no answers for Ophion so at that point once I get past two fates which I'm assuming he's only playing two because that's what most people are all playing that's when I start putting Ophion on board so yeah Thunderbird ate up so many resources in that in that matchup uh, so yeah that's my evil swarms uh, I'm running the normal so I've got rabbit um He's, he was live. I made him live. Uh, you'll see the rest of the deck, but I made him live so much. Um, and then one Dark Arm Dragon. As odd as it sounds, every time that I had this guy, uh, he was live. And every time that I resolved any of his effects, uh, I won the game. Uh, he was great for game ones. He was sided out the entire tournament. He was only in the deck for game ones, and that was it. So there's my monster count. I don't know the number. I should have counted it, but I didn't. So that's my monster count. Now on to the spells. Upstart Goblin. Guys, Upstart Goblin is so good. And not just Upstart Goblin. My play with Upstart Goblin was make Ophion search for uh, Pandemic or my trap, whatever the situation, and then play Upstart, eliminating the chance that I'm going to draw the... Uh, uh, the pandemic upstart was so good guys uh, and Ophion's attack is high enough that once I put Ophion on board he makes Ophion consistent for me and once I put Ophion on board giving you a thousand or two thousand in order to make Ophion does not hurt me as much um, because his his 2550 puts in enough damage that one turn answers whatever whatever upstarts I've had to play 
one Allure and one Rota. Uh, searching this stuff out, along with whatever uh, infestation searches I can get, I'm running 35 or less cards in my deck uh, as to where everybody else is playing 40-ish. So, yeah, I'm running 35 to your 40, which gives me an unfair advantage. Uh, double Pandemic. I'm searching for it. I do not want to draw it. I do not want to draw it. So bad to draw it. But uh, I'm searching for it, so really two is all you need. Um, so, yeah, that is what it is. Triple MST. Triple MST was so good. So clutch. All tournament long. So clutch. Uh, Ravine is a, is a beast of a card. Ravine is good. Um, dress. So, let me talk about dress for a second, guys. What I found out in playtesting, I originally started with Safe Zones and Key Beetle was, uh, was key. Um, but dress, um... What I started to realize with the Key Beetle play, or with the, uh, the Safe Zone plays, is if I make Ophion and I protect him with Safe Zone, now not only is, uh, uh, you know, uh, you think you've protected yourself uh, with the, with the Ophion, the Safe Zone on Ophion, but you really haven't as much as you think because people are main decking MSTs. MSTs are, are making it into everybody's main decks, so now MST is an answer to your Ophion. And you don't want that. You don't want one card, uh, answers to your Ophion. Um, so Dress answers that. Uh, Dress is, uh, I feel like Dress is better right now because of the, because of the amount of MSTs. Uh, you have more MSTs than I have safe zones. Uh, I guarantee you that it's a common card. <laughs> you have more, so MST is 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 seeing so much play right now. Safe zone is not as good. I'm not saying I don't like the card. I'm saying it's not as good right now, and it paid off. It did pay off this weekend. Uh, and then one book of moon, uh, and that rounds out my uh, my spells. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's basically a trap card anyway. Uh, but it's it's staple, guys. It's it's clutch too. The, this this is so clutch right now. Book and triple MST is so good right now so that's my spells I'm making the deck as fast as possible uh, and that's what upstart does for me now the traps uh, infestation infection it's good it's really good uh, mirror force the only main deck outside of the extra deck options that I have the only main deck answer I had to uh, um, Thought Ruler. Like, you, you would think uh, uh, that wasn't as big of a problem as you know, originally as you would think. But Mirror Force put in work, and Thought Ruler was so, so much of a hassle. Answering a Thought Ruler and Colossal Fighter was my job this weekend. That's what I had to do. Everybody seems to think I had to prevent the dragons. Answering Thought Ruler was the big play. Uh, Double Phoenix Chain, not as good as I wanted it to be, but uh, I needed some kind of effect negation. Uh, I didn't I didn't have uh, effect bailers in the main, and I felt like I needed something, uh, and uh, Phoenix Chain made me feel safe, but it wasn't as good as what I, what I felt like it should have been. Solemn Warning, Bottomless, Compulse, Torrential, um, they all kind of speak for themselves. So, yeah. Uh, only one Vanity's Emptiness. So, let me talk about this card again. Uh, actually, I don't really need to talk about this card as much as I need to talk about Upstar Goblin again. Uh, what ends up happening was, uh, I know the guy in San Manteo uh, topped running three Vanity's Emptiness. Uh, in his evil swarm, uh, three is just cloggy. Uh, I tried it; it's cloggy. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, I don't see any other way to play it that it's not going to be cloggy at three. Um, so uh, I end up saying, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to make a big change to the deck. I'm going to cut that. I'm going to cut this. Do this. I've got three spots. What do I want to put? Three spots. Three spots. Upstarts. Upstarts. So now I'm down to two emptiness. Upstart goes in, and I'm like, holy crap! I'm seeing emptiness so much at two. It's almost cloggy at two now. So now I'm down to one, and it was so good, guys. Like I even, I even didn't even have to side deck the second. I ran, I main decked one emptiness, and that was it. And that was how confident I felt in my ability to make Ophion using the upstarts. Was I, I felt confident that I could go down to one emptiness and and still be safe. Uh, and then my last card, Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Main decking Eradicator Epidemic Virus. It was amazing. I won every game that I resolved to this card, even against the Dragons. Uh, it was so, so good. So, uh, yeah, there you go, guys. That's that's the main. Uh, if I was to change anything in the main, um, 
Phoenix Chain, I'm not a big fan of it uh, at this point in the game. Uh, I'm not sure that it's going to stay in. I kind of like the new, uh, well, that's not new, uh, Evil Swarm Kato, Kito, Kato, I can't pronounce his name. He, he pops back roast. Uh, he's a good answer to skill drain, which some people were maining. It was, it's okay. But yeah, uh, th that would be the changes to the main. It's 40. I really like it the way it is right now. I don't know that I would change anything, but that would be one thing that I would consider would be the Kato. Uh, extra deck. Ophion, Ophion, Ophion. Uh, that was my game plan, and it worked out to perfection. If I wasn't making Ophion, I was making Bahamut. And to be honest with you guys, there were actually times, in even in the Dragon matchup, there were times where I had enough back row that I felt confident enough that I did not have to make Ophion. I let my opponent make... Uh, this was a this was a, this situation that I'm actually referring to was a game three situation, and I knew that he was playing Thought Ruler because he had played it on me earlier, uh, and uh, I actually I felt solid about my back row, so I did not make Ophion even though I had the ability to. What I ended up doing was passing to him. Letting him make his Thought Ruler, taking 27 to the face from his uh, from Thought Ruler, my turn making Bahamut and taking his Thought Ruler and wrecking him for game. It was amazing. Thought Bahamut was just so good. Uh, or Boros, I, I can make it with ease. I never made it, never resolved its effect, never even attempted. Uh, Nightmare, never needed it. However, uh, your game plan is uh, you can't make big and go over Ophion, so you gotta go under. This got this stops you from going under Ophion. Uh, one game was <laughs> was won because I decided to play a bad card, Crazy Box. Crazy Box is bad. However, some people were main decking uh, Skill Drain and Dragons, and I saw it uh, against me. So I was like, uh, in game one, so I was like, screw you, dude. I'm going, I'm going 3K. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I had to do. I ended up I, I main decked bad cards <laughs> because it made some matchups better. So uh, yeah. Uh, my stroke, uh, my stroke was good. Uh, never, never needed it, but my stroke was good. Diamond Dyer, uh, it's Crab Dragon Ounce. Um, Master Key Beetle needs to be in there because you can make him rather easily. He can protect some things in some in some situations. However, uh, because I'm not playing Safe Zone and I'm not playing multiple uh, Vanity's Emptiness, he wasn't as good as what he could have been. Uh, had I decided to like main deck uh, Iron Wall or something, he would have been a lot better uh, protecting the Iron Wall. But I decided not to, and uh, he just he needs to be there. But he wasn't as good as what I really wanted him to be. Um, but he's he's staying in. It, it's not an option. Uh, Dweller, uh, Pearl. I uh, actually did make this one time in an, un an unorthodox play. Um, uh, what was it? The Dragoonity, Dragoonity Dragons made uh, Dragoonity Dragon Ruler build that I played last round. Made uh, that guy that takes two, the, the ice thing that takes two wing beast, uh, negates effects and whatnot. And he, he bumped him up to 26. So I was like, screw it, I'm going here. 26. I made him. I made him through. I made him through something. Uh, I don't. Know. I made him tw over the 26. Set my two back row. Felt solid. Yeah. Anyway, Pearl put in some work. Uh, Cowboy, another uh, another thought ruler uh, out, but I didn't really want to use it as that. Uh, so I actually was never in a situation where I had to use it like that. But I did Cowboy for game one time, and then I did attempt Cowboy for game. Um, and got him compulsed, so I ate up a back row, left him with an Ophion on board, left him with no, you know, with no real resources. So it was good. Cowboy did his job, and then Zen mains in case I get XC on cord. However, you know, people have realized that hey, Oph you know, I can answer Ophion with XC on cord, bring the guys back out of threes, and then the Evil Swarm players were like, well, you know what? If you're going to do that to me, I'm going to main deck a Zen mains, and I'm going to make Zen mains if you do that. So now the Dragon players have then in turn said, well, okay, well, if you're going to think that far ahead of me, I'm going to think that far ahead of you too, and I'm going to let you go ahead and search your pandemic and let it be okay. And then once you do that, then I'm going to encore you to where you only get one material and you can't make your Zen mains. So this was a dead card, and it's probably going to come out. Um, so there you go, guys. Uh, that was about it um, for the main. I do want to talk about a couple of extra deck or side deck cards. Um, 
Uh, I'm going to talk about five, and uh, the reason I'm going to talk about these five is because these were the key cards of the weekend, because uh, I played Worms, I played Prophecies, and I played uh, Car Curry. So I played three out of nine rounds. Everything else was Dragons. So these were the five cards that got cited in the most. Double Debunk, which put in work. Uh, Soul Drain, which was good. Um, I only saw it one time during the nine rounds, uh, but it was good. It did what it's supposed to do, and it was all I could ask it to do. I mean, what ended up happening was the opponent makes a uh, skill, dra uh, skill drain. I've got an Ophion on board, and then he... Uh, uh, I ended up making Soul Drain. Uh, I ended up activating Soul Drain to answer all of his dragons. So his skill drain was it was it didn't matter at any point now because now I've got Soul Drain. He can't activate any of his effects to put his bigger monsters out uh, because of Soul Drain. So yeah, it, it put in work. It did exactly what it was supposed to have done. And then uh, Double D Crow. Like D Crow was so clutch, so clutch this weekend. So there you go, guys. That's my uh, my side deck. Well, part of my side deck. That's five of the side deck. My main and extra um, of my top 32 uh, Evil Swarm uh, build from the YC. Or, I'm sorry, from the ARG Open in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, but before I leave, everybody say hello to Rope Dipper, uh, Sword Fight Beast Rope Dipper. Show him some love. A hashtag Rope Dipper. Appreciate it. Subscribe. Comment down below. Show us how much you love us.